Okie dokie, this is Team Yankee for the Amiga. Okay, well that, um, I had this silly assumption, I feel really, yeah, I feel really dumb saying this now, but uh, I thought this would be like an American football game. I can safely say that I am 100% utterly incorrect. Looks like, um, yeah, okay, <laughs> looks like a tank game, yeah, no kidding, okay. Oh wow, what's going on here? Um, this might... I say might, this will require the manual, won't it? So let's, um, let's bring that up straight away. Okay, two manuals are available. Of course, we want the OCS ECS, yep. Ooh, it's loading quite a bit. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. Um. <laughs> okay, so to put this into perspective, usually Amiga manuals, you know, sometimes they're just like pamphlets. They give you the controls, a bit of a story, and that's kind of it. Sometimes you'll get like a thin-ish manual which has like 20, 30 pages, but then you realize it's divided into different languages, usually like three or four. So it kind of like, um, yeah, cuts the information down. This one has 60 pages. It looks like it incorporates quite a bit. Like there's a big old story behind it. There's some, yeah, as the intro implied, it was uh, based off a novel with the same title, so I think it's sort of covering that story as well. Okay, this is this one's going to be quite deep. I hope I'm prepared for it. Uh, choose a commander. Um, let's just go for the top one. Actually, I'm going to... Since... Seeing as though I'm quite indecisive in what to do, let's leave a save state here, just in case I make any mistakes. So what is that? Is that about the quit option? Oh, there we go. Yeah, uh, cancel that. Duck shoot. Oh, it's practice. Okay. This training scenario has been devised to acquaint you with the basics of how to control your platoon and team. Since this is a training run, none of the opposition will fire at you. The basic aim is to take your team around the training road from A to B, leaving platoons at certain places on the way. Hopefully by the end of the run, you'll not only be able to shoot other tanks, but make sure that they're not on your side. Okay. At the start, you'll find Unit 1 facing the other three platoons of Team Yankee. Try to identify them on your map and on the 3D view from Unit 1. Two minutes after the start, there will be a parade of all the vehicles you'll meet in the game, traveling from C to D on the map. Try to identify these vehicles using the section 
on vehicle types in your manual. Now assemble your team on the road facing east and try and move in units one just over the bridge. How long does this go on for? Uh, when you meet the first group of trees other side of the main road, then stop looking around. You see four vehicles in front of you. To a Russian or to an American, try to identify which is which and then make sure to load up a suitable weapon. Hitting them at point blank range should be easy. Take your Romanian three units through round the road circuit, leaving units one behind. Each time you come to a point on the road straddled by two trees, stop. Look around you and you will see two sets of vehicles within range. Try to identify them and try to destroy the enemy vehicles. I think it's just going on a loop, if you like see. Oh no, here we go. Still a couple more pages. Oh my, okay. So, it looks like we have stumbled into a tank simulation game. Which is incredibly deep and involving. So, I will tell you this now. Um, I'm kind of more used to games that you can just like dive right in. Having said that, all games will be at least um, challenged. I'll try my best at this. The only sort of experience I came close to a tank simulator is a game called Campaign. And I was, well, I wasn't even playing that one. I was watching my older brother have a go at that. And that one didn't seem as complicated as this. Like, you could easily sort of transition between, you know, like the map screen and then going into combat yourself, which was like, yeah, it was like a 3D environment. If you find a forest track, you'll be able to achieve a higher speed. I mean, that makes sense. Rivers are blue and very slow to cross. Okay, so you can cross them still. Oh wow, okay. Well, at least let's have an examination of this. So this bit here kind of reminds me, well, just the you know, just in terms of the way the screens are split, reminds me of oh how's that time still going? So the surrender, I take it, white flag. And that pauses the game. Okie dokie. Yeah, it reminds me of a game called Hired Guns. Although, you know, Hired Guns was more of a, I guess, a futuristic dungeon crawler. So, but just in the regard that the screens are split into four is quite interesting. Okay, so that's the map image. And that's like the first person view. Oh, okay, we open fire there. Okay, 
Okay, this is going to be quite tricky to navigate around. I was going to say, those are probably... Yeah, we don't want to start destroying our own team. Oh, hello. What did I do there? Okay, that's um controls. That that would help us out. Chapter two. Okay, game is designed to run using keyboard, analog joystick or Microsoft compatible mouse on the PC. Oh, here we go. So F, the F keys are to choose the different platoons as well. Although, I mean, you could just sort of select them just by clicking on that window. Select map view for chosen platoon. Oh, okay, so F, let's try the F keys then. F7, F8, F9, and F10. Interesting. Would I don't even think the Amiga, you know, like hardware Amiga even supports F keys that high. I can't try and remember now. Oh, okay, so that sort of expands it. Okay, um, so right... That's just something I discovered accidentally. Right mouse button, depending on where the cursor is, turns it left, turns your tank left and right. And yeah, established that a few times. Left mouse button opens fire. Not too sure what that does. Oh, is that like a zoom? Sort of zooms in. That turns as well. Oh, hello. We hang on. Are we surrounded by smoke? Okay. And what does this do? Like a, hmm, I'm going to guess like a cloaking sort of device, or maybe the smoke was to do that. Oh, okay, and there's another, another means. I think that that would probably cloak your party members. <laughs> party member I, again, I'm speaking RPG, aren't I? Okay, just going to endeavour. This one's going to be more of a manual look through. Hmm, I was expecting more controls, to be honest. This one just covers two, a, yeah, a single page of that.
Let's see if, there's, if the main contents page doesn't show the practice uh, screen, like how to play. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon, it's all the way up down to chapter 10. Okay, so that's page 46. Okay, expand view item. Yeah, we covered that. Okay, um, unfortunately I'm none the wiser, there's just, uh, yeah, there's just too much information on the manual to soak in. Um, so we can turn and fire, but how do we, how do we simply move? I see some movement there from Unit 1's perspective. Can't I open fire now? Oh, that sounds like the that like a machine gun going off. Okay. So you've got a choice between using the cannons, using the smoke gun, and using the machine gun. Different types of tanks we've got? Okay. Uh, what team are we controlling at the moment? Unit 1. Okay, that's just selecting different things. Looks like they're just uh, hot keys. Okay, is that like a different perspective there? Uh, okay, <laughs> just goes to show you can destroy your own tanks. Not... Well, I needed to test that out first. So, uh, yeah, this is what's getting me. Turning is fine. Shooting is fine. Uh, basic movements. I don't really want to try and... I suppose the only way to try is to just go for every single key. But, um, yeah, it didn't really explain too much on the uh, movement section. 
So one, two, three, four. Okay, that's going for all the different units. Oh yeah, right mass yeah, right mass button was turning. There's a way you can sort of like drag the mouse, like drag the right mouse button and then just like just push the mouse forward to get it to move. That would be that should have been oh wait a second. No, that's just me turning, isn't it? Oh, or the, could this be the movement bit? If I click from there to there. And these could be like the different formations, perhaps. Oh, wait a second, miles per hour. It was at that to start off with. Okay, are we actually... Are we actually moving to a location? I think we finally figured out how to move. I know, <laughs> it doesn't sound too impressive, but uh, it was like a big accomplishment that way. I mean, I was torn between just trying it out by, you know, playing it out by ear and like going through the manual. I don't know what would have taken longer. Okay, so we're going to take this as a bit of a like experimentation. Can you pause the game? Ah, okay. Unfortunately, you can't. What I was hoping to do was like pause the game and then like issue commands for different units and then like unpause and then all the um, commands would take place. Okay, so we are unit two. So is this our, that'll be the destination. Shame you can't use, shame you can't use the arrow keys to like move the map around. And yeah, I apologize, I've already forgotten what the briefing on the practice was. Um, okay, let's start more experimentation. Unit three. I mean, first impressions, I yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea what uh, reviews this game got. It seems pretty intriguing at the moment. So, okay, we're just moving them all in different locations. Let's have a look. So if we go back to is it that screen, isn't it? And then...
Does that mean they're all going to move together? Ah, okay, it doesn't look like it. Okay, well, at least Unit 1 reached their destination. Oh, I know why, because we didn't suggest the other... We didn't change the miles per hour, did we? Starting to move now. So if we go back to that, then have them all on that perspective. Okay, it looks like all but Unit 2 are moving, but then again, it's hard to tell. They, I think they are moving, it's just... Yeah, it's just a very sort of uh, greeny scenario. You gotta say, I'm first impressions, pretty good. I like the way you can just like, you know, click to different screens and then just have them all open fire. So if you were in like a scenario where every every unit was to engage, it would be quite easy to execute. I can just make out. The other teams in the background. What does this one do? A rocket? Oh, okay. That sounded meaty. Yeah, I've actually forgotten the objectives. Was it to like move to like certain locations? I think the problem is maybe I guess we're sort of spoiled in this day and age now because now we get games that you know sort of like hand walk you everywhere. It's like now do this, now do that, and um, you know you get like tutorials. Well, even some tutorials tutorials can take um, like up to an hour to like accomplish. Was it like Batman Arkham Asylum that had all that sort of stuff? Whereas here you you know it's like well you should have read the instructions more clearly. And it's like yeah maybe I should, but uh, you just not. It uh, it certainly makes it refreshing. It gives me a lot to think about. If we all hang on, let's have a look. Was that destination we needed to go to? So you can just see the flag slowly moving that way. Or well, if we go right there and just like go at full power 
And then if we see any enemies, maybe try to take them out if we can. Let's have a look. So that was unit two. Put it on the big screen. Okay, so it should be going across a river. But not seeing a river in our view. Make out a tiny can make out a tiny tree there. Oh here we go, that's the river. So they said rivers like really sort of slow to travel through, which is understandable. Are we actually going past the river now? Oh yeah, we made it through. I was gonna say this um yeah not gonna lie this is definitely one of the more um complex ones I've played I think the most complex one I've had a go at and this was before the time I started uploading videos was oh what was it called it was called Midwinter it involved a very I mean it's like a team of a few people and they're like operate doing like various operations in well winter basically in very sort of Arctic uh arctic scenarios but i think one of them you had to sort of uh go on your was it like a surfboard trying to evade enemy gunfire and stuff it was yeah again very very detailed i think um yeah its manual was crazy because it was just like pages upon pages you know like identifications of each character was quite uh yeah it was quite involved there but yeah it was insanely was insanely tough to get into to the point where I could only like you know explore a couple of the scenarios so we try to do as much of that as possible okay maybe we just move right here hang on are we going to come face to face with the enemy or yeah the enemy in quotation marks because it's all practice Maybe he's supposed to move right up to the flag.
Okay, so yeah, unit four is close to where the um, houses are around there. Oh, can we actually... Ah, okay, so we can't open fire whilst we're moving. At least we don't think we can. Oh, okay, tell a lie. Maybe it's because we just had different weapons selected. Maybe you could only fire off that missile once. Yeah, I'm going to, probably shortly enough, I'm going to get out of practice and try, try like a major mission. Because, yeah, I don't really want to, it's taken me, yeah, crazy, it's taken me half an hour just to sort of get this far. To sort of get a basic understanding of how everything works. And I say that, I still, don't, yeah, there's still one or two things I'm not too sure about. I'm glad I got the, um, yeah, I'm glad I got the movement down. Here I was, like, thinking that, um, I, I guess I was thinking campaign, you know, moving the tanks a, about and stuff. Where, yeah, in all actuality, I had to just uh, navigate them around through the map instead. Use, yeah, because these were the only ways that, that you could move your platoon. Oh, okay, so that's like zooming in and zooming out of the map. Fair enough. Yeah, even the practice session looks <laughs> quite gigantic. Okay, I'll tell you what, if we click that, um, I'm assuming that that quits us out of practice, the practice bit. Okay. Uh, kills 135, losses 14, chapter first battle. So I guess in, this is like the default. People that you start off with, George Patton. Okay. Wow. Okay. So please identify this vehicle. So I think this is this was actually mentioned in the manual. Sort of must have skimmed that bit, but uh, yeah, just sort of noted that. Um, oh, here we go. Vehicle types is on chapter eight. And that's on page where well, it starts off on thirty one. Okay, here we go, 30 times. Oh, okay, this piece looks kind of cool. Um, it's a shame that you just get like the silhouette of the tank, so I'll just see if I can showcase this a bit more in the manual. Probably won't be able to see all this stuff. Okay, here we go. So if I just scroll up a bit here, it gives you like some, it gives you like, yeah, information about each tank and then you'll see the uh, silhouette of the tank. Just scrolling down a bit there. Okay. So, M1. I just, yeah, I won't read out all of this. It's uh, the first page of all the tanks. Um, so, what is this? An M1 Abrams main battle tank. 
And yeah, apologies if I dis uh, botch up any descriptions. It's the fastest and best protected main battle tank in service with any army in the world today. Its 105mm gun is extremely effective and while it does not have the muzzle velocity of the 125mm hyper-velocity smoothbores of Soviet tanks, its advanced ammunition and very effective ballistic computer combine to give comparable or superior performance. New Sabot ammunition at Sea Glossary has already increased its effectiveness. The thermal sights allowing the gunner improved visibility through smoke and darkness give the vehicle a unique combat advantage over its adversaries. The M1 uses a Chobam, a Chobham composite armor which contains a large outer layer of hard steel with successive inner layers of metals and ceramics. This type of armor very effectively absorbs the heat from the hot gases of heat ammunition. The cost of each M1 tank is in the region of two and a half million dollars. That's quite expensive for one tank. So yeah, even if I was a millionaire, I wouldn't be able to buy a tank if I was to buy one. And it's got all the specifications there. I only recognize Sabot rounds through if anyone remember if anyone remembers um Oh, was it Deus X? And it's like, you had like a certain assault shotgun. I think they provided that round. Maybe I'll get mixed up with something else. But uh, okay, we're going to have to try. Let's go back to the game screen and try to identify the tanks. I mean, we could brute force it by safe scumming, but um, let's try and figure this out normally. Actually, I'll tell you what. We'll save state on this bit. And it feels like a <laughs> feels like a game within a game. Could also be like a copy protection screen as well. Um, okay, 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 okay. Um, right, saving that and done. I need to find. So this one's quite an unusually like an unusual small one. It's all, almost like a thick periscope at the top of it. Uh, Okay, so it's like a small one, one more of a track thin. Oh, could this be the one? Hang on. It might be this one. Again, going back to this screen, it might be this one here. And that's called, just scroll up a bit there, an M901 improved tow vehicle. Hammerhead armored tow launcher. Oh, that's a tow launcher. Okay, as an overhead. Let's try that one. M. I'll make a note of that. M901 improved tow vehicle. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Oh, it's also had in brackets ITZ, ITV, so it could be that. Oh, okay. I assume we got that correct because it just says, and this one, okay. We've got, looks like a much smaller tank than what we normally see. Let's have a look again. Oh, that one's got, a, I was just making comparisons now. That one's got a thicker turret. Did I, go, did I scroll past it? So Abrams' main battle tank doesn't look like that one. The turret looks a lot more beefier and broader. Uh, this one's got more of a... Oh, okay. I remember the APC because it's... Uh, I remember the A... Hang on, sorry. <laughs> Just dancing back and forth through the manual. I don't normally do this, but with this game, we, we've got to make the exception. So um, here we go. The armoured... Oh, that's a good place to actually land it on. The Armoured Personal Carrier APC. You got those, um, I first heard about those through playing Command and Conquer back when I had the uh, Windows 95, which was the 23, that was like our first PC, the 233 processor, I think it had. 
and yeah you can like put in up to five infantry on that and um yeah it was a uh, it was quite speedy very very well armored hence the name and uh, yeah great way to sort of pick up and deposit troops let's just see what it has it says about this uh, basic armored troop carrier in the U.S. Army, and has since been, and has since been since the, and has been sorry since the Vietnam War, was designed to provide a lightweight armored personal carrier for armor and infantry units capable of amphibious and airdrop ammunitions. Okay, amphibious as well. I didn't know that. It didn't actually go, yeah, because um. There were there were some areas where you had like patches of water in Commander Conquer, but the APC wouldn't go through that. But there was like later on in Tiberian Sun, you had ones that can actually go through water too. Uh, capable of amphibious and airdrop operations, superior cross-country mobility, and adaptations to multiple functions. The all-wielded ammunition hull protects the uh, crew from small arms, fire and shell splinters. Fully amphibious, being propelled in water by its tracks. Successful adaptations include the M163 Vulcan self-propelled self -propelled, anti-aircraft gun. I guess with, uh, yeah, going back to Commander Conquer, they could only like provide some limitations, otherwise it would be, you know, if it had like anti-aircraft weaponry, uh, weaponry will make it a bit too powerful. Blue tow vehicle is going to be replaced. M113 is going to be replaced by the M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicle, but the slow proceed uh procum sorry, the so the slow procurement rate means that many US mechanicized units will continue to use the M113 into the 1990s. Okay. So it looks like that. Hang on a second. Or does it? Actually, beg your pardon. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's, it's a mini. Yeah, it's more miniature tank. It's not that. Beg your pardon. But yeah, I was just kind of fascinated by that one, just because. Um, yeah, it just kind of reminded me when I was playing uh, Commander Conquer. Uh, that, okay, so it's definitely not the T62 main battle tank. Definitely not that one as well. Warsaw Pact. Ah, here we go. It could be this one. Well, okay, I hope it's that one because that's the last one it, it comes across. So I just wish my <laughs> just wish my monitor was slightly bigger so I could put them and compare it side by side. It's just the tracks that caught me off guard. Uh, yeah, sorry about this. <laughs> Why is this taking me so long to figure out? There's only certain... How many have we got there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, okay. Okay, well, I think it's this one. The BTR-60 Armoured Personal Carrier. Uh, carrier. It doesn't look very tanky. <laughs> it doesn't look very tanky. Is why I'm not, yeah, I'm not afflicted with the army in any way, affiliated with the army in any way, shape, or form. Okay, enough, um, yeah, enough uh, meandering around. I think it's the BTR. Oh, it's, that's the one at the bottom. Okay, the BTR sixty. Okay, and finally, what is this vehicle? I'm not sure if I'm getting these right or not now. It's not really acknowledging that I'm getting it right. Uh, 
Okay, I think that was the one I was discussing earlier, the M113 APC. M113. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> okay, so let's try it again then. So I have to get through on the trot. Okay, that one looks like the A M113. But even though I've got the manual side by side, it's still... Could that... Okay, that one's got a long turret, so I think that's the T... T62. And that one's more... That one's got a very long turret. Okay, that looks like the M1 Abrams main da battle tank. M1, is it just called IT? Oh, here we go. Yeah, sorry, second from the second from the top. Still, oh, okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> this is ridiculous, it really is. Um, Okay, so the small one is, should be the toe, T-O, what does it say, M901, improved tow vehicle. Oh, sorry, in brackets, ITV. Okay, so that's that one there. And that looks like the APC. But they got two different types, haven't they? Yeah, I think it's the M113. Okay, I am not understanding this then. And uh, yeah, judging by the silhouettes, that could be either the T-62 or the T-72. Oh, <laughs> or the A-1 or the M-1 Abrams main battle tank. Because it's got like guns on the top of the turret as well. I think it's the M-1 Abrams. I'm pretty sure I got that last one right, but maybe not the other two. Okay.
So that's the tow, that's the ITV, that's the tow vehicle. It's one of the few tanks with the mini turret. That's uh yeah, let's go. Should, should should get this sorted out. Tank, tank with the gun. No, that's an APC. It's not that. I mean, it looks similar to the M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. Not sure if it's I. Hmm, I don't know. It's the only tank that has a sort of small-ish turret, so maybe it is that. Yeah, let's go with that. The turret. Looks like the one on the silhouette. M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. I think that's the last one on the page. Four vehicles. That one has to be the BTR-60. So the one at the end. Oh my god! <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. Um... Okay, <laughs> just as we come, just as it's getting past the hour, my god. You know what, there should be a whole game based on that, it's like, what does this look like? And you have to flick through the manual, I'd happily engage into this sort of thing. Um, okay, um, early today, Soviet first Esalon troops crossed the... So, okay, we'll have a look at the first battle, because, yeah, if we continue going on this, we'll probably go on this for, like, forever. Um, early early today, Soviet first echelon troops crossed the East German border and engaged NATO forces in strength. The good news is that our cavalry brought that echelon to a standstill and badly weakened it. The bad news is that they have committed their second echelon to the attack and all of our frontline forces have taken a beating. Our cavalry have nearly completed its evacuation through the village. Position A. Okay. We expect enemy forces to come pouring through the forest gap to the east any minute now. Forward scouts suggest they will be at Batalon strength with T-72 tanks supported by infantry mounted BTR-60s. Okay, so the BTR-60 was... that's the other army personal carrier. Okay, and... And send solid tanks along the way. It is absolutely imperative that Team Yankee holds its present defensive line at all costs. Team Bravo to the south at position B has just been negated by a heavy barrage of Soviet infantry. Team Yankee, this may be your first real taste of war. Make sure it isn't your last. Um, okay, unit one, because it's two. Two Abram tanks and two ITVs. Team Yankees HQ platoon. Okay, and this was the engage option. It, yeah, I always sort of got yeah put off by this sort of screen because um <laughs> almost makes me think of like this is like the close feature on the window and go play. Right. Um, so saving that state now. I uh, probably want to look at the. Um, want to expand that. And yeah, I know I realise we're just heading to that arrow right now. So I'm gonna look very very quickly. Map 
by and large looks kind of empty. Okay, here we go. So we kind of want to move here, don't we? I think we do anyway. Sometimes it's difficult to tell if they're moving or not. I believe they are. Because they wear. Is that them now? So what are they playing at? What are they playing at? What am I playing? Oh, there we go. Get to see the uh, tanks animation. I hope, <laughs> I hope that hour was worth it. We got to see a bit of movement there. Holy hell, movement in a computer game. And unit So straight in the straight in the water. I don't think we're even gonna have enough time to engage the enemy, unfortunately. Okay, so let's try to at least establish the weapons. That's like the basic one, causing explosions there. Not too sure what that does. Oh, it's a brief tour of the house. Oh yeah, that was like, I don't know, sort of like a smoke screen, wasn't it? And that was just like, yeah, so it's just like the that's quite cool effect. So that's like the machine gun. Though I have a feeling that once, you know, uh, battle would be engaged, we probably need a little bit more than just, just like straight forward brute force. I don't know, I'm just sort of envisioning Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3 and Unit 4 just sort of like being like in different positions and all taking shots. Oh, there's a battle taking place somewhere. Um. Oh my goodness, okay. That's... Uh, kind of want them to move then. Um, oh, Unit 1 has just lost a vehicle. Okay, so I can't fire, it looks like I can't fire any of these weapons whilst moving, but I can... Still use the gun fine. Hmm, 
can't even see the enemy, so I don't know how to retaliate. Our unit two. Oh wait, that's one of our <laughs> it's one of our tanks, isn't it? Okay, so you can only fire that that once after a while. I think the enemy around there. If I dare to get a bit closer. Interesting with the smoke field. I was going to say, did they plan that? I'm guessing the enemy cast that sort of smoke screen because we closed it in on them. One's wiped out, it seems. Okay. Oh, here we go. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah, two's been destroyed. Why am I sounding so cheerful when I say that? Oh, we briefly saw the, um, the Russian flag there. There, didn't we? Or maybe they got found themselves into hiding. Um, is that the enemy there? <laughs> I just did some information a little while ago. Oh, right on target, great shot. Yeah, I think that is the enemy right in front of me. I keep getting paranoid because I think that's my own guys. Oh, okay. I think I actually destroyed something. cleaning house here. <laughs> well, maybe. Oh, they're fighting back.
one less Soviet vehicle. Okay, yeah, so we're going 10 minutes over time. I do apologise, but um, I'm, I like to think that it was worth it just to sort of reach this sort of combat. And uh, yeah, this, as you can tell, this is... Oh wait, there's one in the distance there. I can just make out. Okay, I think we nuked him out. But yeah, I do apologise, we are going to have to wrap it up for this game. Uh, so yeah, that was my first, that was my first taste, my first actual taste of a tank simulation game. And uh, yeah, I was a bit, it was a bit daunting, because I was a bit, you know, I was worried that I wouldn't even get to this stage, because I was trying to, you know, figure out all, the, you know, what the tanks look like and stuff. And the APCs, uh, once I finally got into it, yeah, it was rewarding, it felt, yeah, you can tell from the sort of relief, you know, the way my, I'm just speaking with like a relieved voice that I was able, you know, I was glad to, able to get to something like that. Oh, wait, is that another enemy? So, um, yeah, you're going to need a lot of time to get into this game. You're going to have to, um, yeah, delve deep into the manual. It's not just something that you can just pick up and play in a matter of moments. But when you do, I think there's a bit of a, I think there's a bit of a rewarding experience there. And yeah, that wraps up this game. Hope you, hope some of you enjoyed that. I guarantee that not everyone would. But yeah, I found it uh, to be refreshing. <laughs>